Today on TWIP Apps, the iOS app Prime makes its way to the desktop, adding style to all of your photos. The awesome iOS app Prime has grown up into a full-fledged Mac desktop app that operates standalone or as a plugin for Lightroom and Mac OS X photos. With an explore view that makes it easy to preview dozens of styles at once, batch processing, and the raw power of the Mac, giving your photos some serious style has never been easier. I'm Photo Joseph, and this is TWIP Apps. Welcome everybody to another episode of TWIP Apps. I'm your host, Photo Joseph, and it is my pleasure to welcome a return guest, Art Chang from the company Prime. He has been on the show before, TWIP episode eight, if you hadn't seen it, and that was about Prime for iOS, but Prime has been released now for the desktop, and I'm very happy to have him back on the show to show off the all new Mac app Prime styles. Art, welcome back to the show. Thanks, it's great to be back. It's good to have you. So um, it hasn't been all that long since you were on, but this is such a really cool and exciting app and a great development for Prime that I really wanted to get you on soon so we could show this off to all of our viewers. Um, give us just a little bit of background here, first off, of the company itself, just in case people haven't seen the previous episode. Tell me a little bit about Prime. How big is the company itself right now? Yeah, so Prime, we currently have five people, okay. uh, two full-time developers, myself, who I code when I can, designer, and community manager. Um, we've been around since the end of 2014, um, and uh, we're located in San Francisco. Awesome. Great San Francisco startup. Very cool. Yeah. So the the process of coming out with a desktop version from the iOS version, was that the plan from the beginning, or was it something where you went, wow, this has been really successful, really popular, maybe by popular demand, we've got to do a desktop version as well? Uh, it's always been on the sort of timeline of what we wanted to do. We didn't have anything scheduled just yet, but ourselves being photographers, we all wanted it. And over Christmas break, actually, my co-founder Joe, he was a little tired of doing the dance of taking a photo on his DSLR and then transferring it to his phone and then using Prime to edit it and then you know bringing it back. And so over Christmas, he built a prototype uh, to do it. So he, it was amazing. We, he, we come back from a couple days of Christmas celebration. He's like, Hey, let me show you something. And I was like, what? Let's just, let's ship it. Uh, so it was, the team is very much like that where we have needs that we want to, you know, we, we can build these things ourselves. So we're like, Hey, we always want to do this. He had some time. He put it together. And from there it was sort of a no brainer to, to build it. So we took a couple months to polish it up and put in a bunch of features. So that's sort right. of how it came about. Very cool. You know, this is a great lesson for other companies out there. Having people in your company or all the people in your company, in the case of one as small as yours, who not only use the product because it's your product, but actually have a real need for it. You're all photographers, so you need and want this product. And therefore, you're much more inclined to go out and develop something. Whereas if you're all accountants who are just making a photo <laughs> app on the side, it would just be this kind of, you know, whatever cool thing that you do. And maybe you add some features because people want it. But the fact that you're all shooters, that's that makes all the difference in the world. So I'm really happy to see that. Yeah, for sure. It's been really important to everything that we build. Um, sort of the the measure of if something's worthwhile to build is if we're going to use it ourselves. And right. then like how many of our friends are going to use it? And they're all photographers too. So it, it's a great way to understand what to start building and a great way to get feedback just from people we hang out with every day. So right. it's it's a really great sort of cycle of how we do things. Very cool. Very cool. Now, remind me, the iOS version it, uh, or the mobile version, is it iOS and Android or is it iOS only? It's iOS only. Okay. So this is Mac only as well, right? This is not a Windows product. That's right. Okay. Just want to make sure we got that out so people know what we're looking at here. So, okay. So this is Mac only. The mobile version is iOS only. And I've seen it before. I've played with it. I actually did a small write-up on the site already. So I know a little bit about it. And I know that the look and feel is very, very similar. It really has a very consistent look and feel across the two of them, which is great. So users who are currently using the mobile version, switching over to the desktop version is going to be a breeze. And that's a, that's a nice thing to see. Yep. Yeah, cool. we, we definitely wanted to keep sort of the look and feel consistent across the board. And also, we love the way that we designed the iOS app. And so I really like how 
mobile development and design really kind of constrains you in a good way. It kind of shows you like, here's the simplest way to do things and you don't need too much crazy stuff. Right. And so moving that over to the Mac OS was, you know, it was a great, it was a great step. Good. Very good to hear. Cool. Well, why don't we just jump on into the demo and take a look at the product? Uh, I know you've Sounds got good. it fired up on your screen, ready to go. So I'll switch over. And I think we're looking at the, the first launch screen now, right? Yes, exactly. So if you open up the app standalone, which I'll show you the other ways you can do it later, uh, you'll get this page or you'll get this screen. And um, I'll kind of run through the tour and just kind of give you a quick um, overview of what, what it Great. does. So the first screen you'll see, it works with Lightroom. It works with the Photos app. And we have a little link to get to our iPhone app as well. And so Prime Styles for Mac works with Lightroom, just like Adobe Photoshop or any other extensions work. Mm -hmm. And it works really nicely with the Photos app that everyone has on their Mac. Right. That was very impressive to see. Cool. Yeah. And then I mean, it works standalone as well. Yeah. And standalone as well, as you can see right here. Um, and this kind of talks about the styles and what styles are. And uh, I can get into what the styles are once we see that screen. Sure. And uh, here's a preview of our explore mode. And explore mode was really important to us because with the extra screen real estate on the Mac app, we were able to preview your photo with all the edits already applied to them or the styles applied to them so that you can get this really great kind of uh, look and you can choose and pick based on how it looks rather than tapping through them and trying them out. Right. So this this process makes it a lot quicker to actually find a, a style that works for your photo, um, which is good. And this is, uh, I know in, in the thing that I wrote, I likened this to the Visco cam layout on, especially on the iPad Pro. Obviously, Visco is not, a, not on the desktop, uh, at least not as a desktop app. Um, and to be able to see those previews all in one big row of thumbnails, it makes it really fast and easy to find a look that works. And I really yeah. like that about it. I think that's a great feature. Cool. Yeah, Super totally. Cool to see that in there. Um, cool. And then we do have all these shortcuts. And these are all shortcuts that you can see. Uh, some of them are very much the same as Lightroom shortcuts or Photos app shortcuts. Now, these shortcuts will work across all three. So once you learn the shortcuts, they're good everywhere. Yeah, once you'll see, uh, because once you open up the photo into Prime Styles, uh, these will all work. Okay, the same great. Way. Cool. Uh, so now we're going to get into it. And what you see here are three options. Uh, well, the tutorial we've already seen. So let me open up the examples just to get a nice look at that. And so these are photos I took. Um, we used my photos as examples. And as you can see on the left, there are all, all of our styles. And if I click through them, or I can use the up and down tool, um, you can see that they're changing. Uh, so these photos are actually 42 megapixel size photos. Oh, wow. Um, so you can see that it's you know cranking through them, but it's pretty quick. It's fast. Now, what kind of yeah. machine are you demoing on today? This is a MacBook Pro, one of the later ones um, on a 13 inch. So okay. it does pretty good. Um, so here you can see the two photos side by side. Um, I can also adjust the strength of the style, which you can't really do if it's um, sort of like a Lightroom preset or anything. Mm -hmm. And we do have sort of this compare split, which you can see the before and after, and also the toggle for the original. Got it. Um, now, at the same me, time- The styles that we're seeing here, let me just ask you real quick, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, they have the same names as the ones on iOS, correct? That is right. And are they- as much as possible the same, or are they identical? If I was to load they, the same photo into both apps, run the same style, would they look the same? They're exactly the same. Perfect. That's yeah, we great. wanted to maintain that uh, consistency across everything. So um, exactly. So this one is abundance uh, that we're using here. And you can also look at the details just like you can on iOS. Uh, and you can see uh, the almost exact same thing. And um, you can so also this is favorite. that that info is about the photographer who designed the style, or, or how does that work? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I can speak to that uh, momentarily. So yeah, um, so all these styles are created and designed with these professional photographers, and they are basically the entire edit that they would do for a photo. And so you can actually take their original raw photo and just tap this and it will do their entire edit for them. And the really cool thing about our style authors, we call them our style authors, is that they actually use this in real work. 
and uh, on iOS or from the Mac app, they are able to save full-size resolution photos and max quality. And so we're not only helping these guys streamline their photo process, but we're making available to everyone else. And so I think it's really cool that we're able to use more of like the modern style of photography that you see everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. and so that's kind of the thing that we're going for here. So this page shows you a couple of things. It shows you examples of the photos that he actually used the styles on as well as sort of his description of how he developed it and what it's useful for. Um, you can it. get really creative and use it for different things, but those are some of the things that he looks at. Got it. So I want to ask you about the the process of developing these styles. And some of this might be proprietary, so you're not able or willing to answer it. But let's say you're working with me as a photographer and I come to you or you decide that we're going to work together. And I have a series of images that are a style that, you know, is my style. Are you then, are you going to look at how that was done in Photoshop? Are you going to have me sit down with some proprietary in-house software and redo the image using your software? Basically, the question is, how do you go from a style that I, as a photographer, have worked with or have been creating over the years and develop that into something in your app, which is obviously not Photoshop, not Lightroom, and doesn't have those tools? Yeah. Um, so what we do is we actually sit down with the style author and we ask them, so what what are you trying to do with this photo? Um, point out all the the biggest points of like what you're trying to do with abundance, for example. And so abundance really makes the greens vibrant. And so that's a really big part of, of his style. And so we, we talked to him about all these little sort of characteristics of the style. And what we do is we then look at the originals and look at the final product. And the there's no proprietary software. It's just us kind of creating the exact same style with our code. And there is a little bit of play within Lightroom and Photoshop just to see like all the different levels, but we do that in-house. Um, so it's a it's very much sort of this merger of science and art. We take like the artistic parts of the style, we look at it, and then we build a code that allows us to actually let people use it. Because of that, we haven't really been able to do anything with like a Lightroom preset because these go far beyond that. Right. And um and it's really cool. Sometimes we're able to actually improve someone's editing style that they haven't sure. been able to do before. So the process very much look at the originals, talk to the style author or photographer about what they're going for, gather all the information and make the final product through code and a lot of mishmash of stuff. And everyone's style is different. So it's really hard to say how long it would take. Um, some are a little more straightforward and some are like very involved we're just trying to create something brand new um there's been a couple styles in here that we've created off of work that the final product never um was styled that way yet and in the end of it we changed the entire style process for those originals and that was oh, really okay. cool interesting it's i find it fascinating i'm not an engineer i'm not a coder at all but i find it fascinating or maybe that's why i find it fascinating that you can make an image look a certain way just through code. And obviously every slider has is code in the beginning uh, before it becomes a pretty slider that someone like me can grab and drag around. But the, you're able to have a conversation or your engineers have this conversation with a photographer, say, make the greens more vibrant and then purely in code do that. There's no slider for the engineers to drag and say, is this what you meant? It's all one yeah. and zero. It's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. I, I think that's fascinating. Yeah. And, and the engineers are just like us just like me and, and some and a couple of us, which is really cool because we all speak the same language. We right. understand what it means to make the tint greener and we know right. how to code that. And so um, right. it's very special. Yeah. Nice. Nice. All right, cool. Let's get back to the screen. Sweet. Um, great. And so I'm going to show you guys. Uh, oh, so you can see the information. You can also favorite this style and favoriting will actually show it in this favorites drop down. So there are a lot of styles. Um, there's about 105 currently. And so favoriting them just basically allows you to um, sort of find the ones that you like. Um, sure. And so, now, yeah, there's so no that's sort of the standalone between, app. There's no syncing between this and the iOS version, is there? Well, so, it's interesting. It syncs through iCloud Photo Library. So you'll see in a second. I can actually show you the Photos app version of it. If you use iCloud, the photos sync up completely. <laughs> I would actually what I meant. Sorry, I meant for the app itself for Prime Styles and Prime for iOS. What I'm thinking is things like favorites. So if I mark a favorite in Prime I Styles see. on the desktop, will I see that favorite on Prime iOS as well? You wouldn't. It's not connected that way. Okay. 
um, because we don't have any login user accounts and stuff like that just yet. Mm -hmm. Right. Feature request. Um, I would love that because I do, I've, I've been using it for a while since our, our last podcast, I've been using it on iOS and I definitely have my favorites that I've marked. And that was the first thing I launched it on the desktop and I went into favorites hoping I was yeah. going to see my same ones. Was, you know, I, you wouldn't necessarily have to have your own iCloud, uh, your own login. You can use iCloud uh, syncing as well. I know a lot of apps use iCloud for yep. that sort of favorite syncing. So yeah. future request for you. All right. I'll cool. let you back. Love it. <laughs> uh, sweet. Um, I'm going to show you the explore mode. Great. And so the explore mode will take one of the photos in your batch and it will actually show you every single style with your photo or every style applied to your photo. So it's a very easy way to pick uh, just basically based on visuals. Yeah. Um, and so you can actually also change sort of the, the size of it. So you can get, you know, look at way more than usual mm-hmm. or just three up. Um, and so, yeah, there's... There is sort of the standalone, um, and I can show you guys sort of the integrations that's going to happen. Yeah, dude, soon. tell us before you jump out of here. So we're looking at two pictures right now. Why are we seeing two pictures on screen at once? Oh, yeah, because uh, in the demo, in, in this demo app, we're able to open two examples at once. You can also open one at a time or as many as you want to edit all at the same time in a batch. Okay. Yep. Um, cool. So let me close this guy, and I'm going to open the Photos app. So this is the Photos app that's built into everyone's um, Mac OS. And from here, I can use this photo that I took. And if you go to the Edit menu in Photos app, you'll see all the Photos app's usual adjustment tools. Mm -hmm. And if you hit Extensions, um, Prime Styles will be there. Uh, You can set it up. It's it's just installing it. Um, There are instructions for that in the tutorial. So you hit Prime Styles, and you can see it. Uh, opens up. And so in this case, you can see it's just one photo. So Photos app does not allow you yet to edit more than one photo at the same right. time. So there's no batch in Photos app. Um, the very right. cool And just to th- clarify that for anybody who is questioning, why don't I have batch processing out of Photos? This isn't, has nothing to do with Prime Styles. This is a limitation of the photos for OS X architecture. Um, it only allows one photo to be processed at a time. So just anybody sure. watching who's going, oh, why can't I do that? Nobody can. It's a photo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, totally. Um, so you can see here, uh, same thing. I'm able to edit everything. And so this one kind of shows the difference really well. So I can actually save the changes. And it will be saved straight into the Photos app. So there's no duplicates. Uh, it's also non-destructive. So you can still revert to the original. And it's already in your library. Um, so it's really seamless. It's really nice. If it had batch editing, it would be amazing. <laughs> uh, we've actually talked to the Apple guys directly about it, and they're not against it. It's just the way it's architected right now. Right. They don't get it for free yet. Yeah, no, fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. So uh, the file that was sent over to Prime Styles, um, I don't know, are you, well, first of all, are you working with a raw file here inside of Photos to begin with? Or was that that a, a one j- was a JPEG. Okay. If you were working with a raw file, if you had a raw file in there, what is being sent to Prime Styles? Yeah, so we take the raw file and we're converting it to a very, very high resolution TIFF that we then edit for you. Okay, great. So now now that we're back in Photos, are we seeing it as a TIFF or has Photos converted it to a JPEG? Yeah, it's a JPEG. Or it actually maintains whatever file format it was unless it wasn't. There's, there's a way to set uh, in the settings what kind of a uh, photo you want to save it back to. But if it's a JPEG, it'll save it back. If it's a JPEG, if it's a TIFF, same thing. Okay. And that you're talking about a setting that's inside of Prime Styles? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Next time yep. we're in there, show that to me because I think that's something I missed. And and that's an important thing for, for users to know where it is. Uh, I think because Photos is generally a consumer-focused app, um, those who may be trying to get a little bit more out of it may not realize that there are ways to, depending on the plugin you're using, to make sure that you are maintaining the highest quality. And it'd be no good for someone who's looking for the highest quality to be saving out to a compressed JPEG and not realize it and dumb down the quality of their work. Sure. So, yeah, let's take a look at that um, one. Yeah, so let me show that to you right now. So um, I'm actually going to, let me close the Photos app. I'm actually going to open up a batch of photos just straight from the Finder. Um, you can either drag these into Prime Styles or you can open them with the menu. And you can see the standalone opens up again. And it was from the Finder. Um, and so, yes, you can actually edit all of these all at the same time. 
So the batch editing works nicely from the finder. And so here's where you would actually be able to choose. So you hit export and it brings up sort of all the things, or you can actually choose from here, JPEG, PNG, TIFF. Mm -hmm. um, from here, you can just let me export them back in here so I don't lose them. And it just exports all the photos. So that's how you would um, do that from here. And they're, they're pretty big. Okay, so now when we're in photos, though, if we started with a raw file in photos, that's being converted to a TIFF to send to Prime Styles, correct? Is that what you're saying? And yep, then, yep. And then once you're doing the editing in Prime Styles, you're done, you hit save. When you're back in photos, is that a TIFF file that is sitting in, inside of photos now? Yeah, that's correct. That is correct. Okay, great, mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and so that's sort of all I had for the demo. Um, it's pretty simple, but there's there's a lot you can do with it. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have it set up to show from Lightroom as well? Um, I don't at the moment. Um, the Lightroom is very similar to the way that Photos sure. app does it. Uh, it just takes a little while because a lot of my Lightroom files are really huge. Um, okay. But from Lightroom, though, you can send batches, can't you? You can send multiple yeah. photos at once. Right. Yeah, so, that's so a big I can difference. describe it really quickly. Um, sure. You're in your Lightroom catalog. You select one or many from your catalog. Right-click, you can edit in just like you would edit in Photoshop or any other um, editing tool as an extension, and it'll go right into Prime Styles. Um, once you hit export or save, it will save right back into your catalog, so it's very seamless. Right, and in that case, it's in Lightroom, you have the power to say, I want to send a TIFF or a PSD file. That's something oh, that yeah. Lightroom preferences, so that's where that's defined. So exactly. anybody who's using that, that's where that goes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, okay, so now I do have a couple questions for you in comparing the desktop version to the iOS version. So first off, on the iOS version, you also have a lot of adjustments like curves and brightness and contrast and stuff like that, which isn't here. And right. I think it's safe to say that the assumption is that you're going to do that type of work before you send it to prime styles because you are already starting with photos or Lightroom. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. Um, the very first version of this is called prime styles, uh, because it is very much just the styles. Okay. And, um, yes, the biggest use case that we've had users using it and ourselves as well included is that we do a lot of adjustments on Lightroom first right. and we send it over. Um, that's not to say we're not going to add Really cool adjustment tools later on. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Fair enough. I think that, uh, yeah, well, I think you've said enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's nice to hear. All right, then the second one is, uh, is, is a bit tougher. So in iOS, my by far favorite feature about a favorite capability is that it will, it will not guess, but it will analyze the photo and decide what styles will look the best and make suggestions for me. And I find that that is probably nine out of 10 times, one of those styles, and usually one of the first few of those styles is just awesome. And that's exactly, not, not what I was looking for, but it's just, it's perfect. This looks great. I'm happy with that. Save it. That's not in here. Why are we missing that? Uh, if we had more time and resources, it'd be in there by now. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, it could be, it, be, it could be coming. It could be coming. <laughs> yeah, there, there, I guess the, the answer is that there's, there's no real reason why we didn't include it. Like it, it would work great. Okay. So it's just a, a resources issue. You just gotta, it takes time. You're a small company and uh, you got to ship eventually. Yeah. I mean, I think we spent a total of two months building this thing from top to bottom, including Christmas. So, uh, the suggestions engine is super complicated. Um, okay. and so moving it from iOS to Mac OS is going to be quite, quite a, quite a bit of work. Okay. Well, I look forward to it and uh, hopefully it'll be worth it for you guys to do because it's, like I said, it's one of my favorite features, favorite awesome. capabilities of it. Um, actually, it's all related to that or specifically about that. I noticed that because I was flying in an airplane mode, obviously not on Wi-Fi, that I couldn't use the suggested features. So that tells me that it is connecting to, an inter to the internet, to a database somewhere, to some kind of cloud computing. What's actually happening behind the scenes when it suggests a style for my photo? Yeah, sure. So when you bring the photo in from your album, it will immediately analyze it using some computer vision and just pixels and stuff like that. So what it's analyzing is things like brightness, dynamic range, uh, dominant colors in the photo, um, things like that. And it packages that data up into a little bit of info that we then send to a server. The server is actually doing the suggestions based on all the properties that we get from your photo. And 
we're matching on about 56 different properties. So the server, it needs to happen on the server because the server is, is always learning. It's, it's using a pretty complex machine learning um, hmm. backend to, to train the photos. And so what it does is it looks at all original photos, it trains on that, and so we can very accurately match your photo properties with the styles. Uh, it is possible to get that on the client side, on the, the phone. Uh, that's definitely an option that we've been thinking about doing. But the power that we have on the server side is is almost infinitely greater. Sure. And so we eventually will build a lot more sort of dynamic learning. And so as you and maybe your social graph are using different styles, we will suggest things even based off of your peers. Um, Interesting. So that's why the server side makes a lot more sense right now. Okay. And, you know, hopefully... Google or Facebook builds the internet balloons all over the world and we can access the internet <laughs> from everywhere. Yeah, that'd be nice. Okay, yeah. so then um, it's just to assuage any any security concerns that people might have, because we always like to like to consider the security th- side of things on TWIP. Um, you're not sending the photo. The photo itself is not being transmitted. It's just information about the photo and it's really color space, dynamic range, pixel colors, things like that. It's not even... Uh, EXIF data about the photo or copyright holder or anything like that? No, it's just pure numbers. Like dynamic range is this, um, these two numbers, the brightness is this, the dominant colors are red. That's okay. the only thing we send. Yeah. Okay. So no identifying information. No one on the receiving end could look at that and say, oh, look, this is a picture of X. There's oh, yeah. that there's data no simply way. isn't there. And then is it is that data stored, even though this is totally anonymized and there's no... Um, there's no identifying information is in there. Is the data stored? I mean, I guess since you're, it's a machine learning thing, it probably is stored just to yeah, yeah. keep on Yeah, it, yeah. It's storing back. not the exact numbers, but um, sort of the matching. It's kind okay. of complex, but it'll take all the data and say, here's the data that matched here. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I just I like to ask these things because I know that a lot of listeners will be listening and and, and their ears will perk up and they'll oh, say, well, "Hold sure. on a second. You're sending my you're sending my picture back? No, no, it's not the picture. It's data yeah. about the picture, um, and it's the kind of thing that people like to know." So, yeah, exactly. And sending a whole photo back would take forever. So our course. matching, depending on your internet speed, obviously, is very very fast. It's milliseconds. It is. So. It is. And I I can say that from firsthand experience. And once I realized that the matching was not happening on my phone because the first time I tried to use it in airplane mode, obviously it came up and said it wasn't available. And then the next time realizing how quickly it processed, then I go, okay, it's, it's not sending the whole picture. Something else is happening. So it's a question that I wanted to ask. So thank yep. you for explaining that. Very good. Cool. Well, this is exciting. Thanks so much for coming on to show this to us. Is there anything else about the app that you want to show or hit on before we move on from, from here on the show? Um, no, that's about it. Okay, cool. Well, thanks again for bringing that on to us. So this brings us to the next part of the show, which is our guest pick. And I know that you have something that I'm not a user of, so I'm excited to talk about this. So what art is your guest pick of the week? And this app can be anything photo related, just not your own app. (laughs) Sure. Uh, I picked the Amazon photo app on iOS. And I really like it because it backs up your photos there's no limit as long as you're a Prime, Amazon Prime, not Prime with two eyes, Prime, but an Amazon <laughs> Prime user, you actually get unlimited photo backups, full resolution, um, and it could also back up raw files. So I open up the uh, Amazon Photos app and it just automatically starts backing up my photos there. The really cool thing I like about it is that you can then access all the, access all the photos from the web or from your computer and the most beautiful part of it is that I, I have a photo backup um, that is uh, like a Synology RAID system. And that has all my raw files. And there's like a couple terabytes in there sure. of my raw photos. And I can actually run the Amazon Photos app on it so that it backs up the raw photos. But it's an Amazon Photos is an iOS app? It's an well. The iOS app is great, but you can actually use it everywhere. So you can use it okay. on desktop. You can use it on the Synology as a headless client as well. So I really love it because all my photos are on photo Amazon Photos like cloud. I guess wow. you can call it, and uh, it's just really seamless. I can find the photos. The app itself is pretty useful. Like you can find all your photos there, but mm-hmm. it's unlimited backups. Unlike Google Drive, it's full resolution. It supports RAWs as well, so it's kind of kind of amazing. Wow, that is cool. As long as you're an Amazon Prime user. So wait, it's 
Yeah, Amazon. Okay, sorry. Yes, Amazon Photos, Amazon Prime user. Good. Very cool. Very yeah. fun. I I had actually never even heard of this. When we first started talking about it, I had in my head Google Photos. And you said Amazon, and I almost corrected you. Like, oh, wait, no, hold on. So I look at my notes. Go, no, this is Amazon <laughs> Photos. Okay, so wow, that is uh, that is very cool. Super. Yeah. Well, I look forward to installing that myself then. And uh, running as a headless client, I'll have to definitely have to check that out. So we'll include a link to the show, a link to that in the show notes of viewers and listeners. So you can uh, you can check that out yourself. Or I'm sure if you just Google Amazon Photos, you'll come across it pretty quickly. So excellent. Well, that does bring us to the end of the guest portion of our show. Art Chang, thank you very much for coming on with us again. Where can people learn more about your app and where can they follow you on the social medias? Yeah, sure. If you go to prime.com, prime with two eyes. Dot com, you'll see everything you need to know about it. On social media, we are Twitter. On Twitter, we're at Prime. Instagram, we're at Prime. And Facebook.com slash Prime as well. Very good. It helps to have a, a unique spelling it's of all, name. Yeah, it's all Prime. <laughs> It's all prime. <laughs> Excellent. Prime all the time. Super. Well, thanks again for coming on the show with us. Really appreciate it. And best of luck to you. Cannot wait to see what happens next. And I'm looking forward to the versions that you uh, mildly alluded to. <laughs> all right, cool. Thanks so much. <laughs> Take care, Art. See you later. Okay. All right. Well, so that was, of course, Prime Styles for Mac OS X or Mac OS as it is soon to be called. Very, very cool. Um, I, there's not really much else to say that we didn't cover in the show. The point, the fact that it is a growing app that we're going to see some of the features that I was asking about to me is fantastic. That's something that's really important to me. Those, uh, the ability to get those suggested looks is phenomenal. If you haven't played with that yet, install Prime on your iOS device and check it out. It's amazing when you just choose a picture, let it recommend some styles for you, and you'll be blown away at what it creates or what it suggests. So that's something I'm really looking forward to seeing on the desktop, and it sounds like that's going to be coming at some point. I guess it sounds like it's quite a bit of work, but we're going to see it. Hopefully, we'll get the syncing at some point in between. I really do have a nice selection of favorite uh, styles on my iOS device. I'd love to see those same styles automatically syncing over to the desktop. Obviously, it's not a deal breaker, but that would be a certainly be a nice feature to have. And I'm really glad that Art was able to answer my question about the transmission of the images. So there's absolutely nothing to worry about, nothing as far as your photo itself, no real metadata about the photo. The photo itself isn't being sent. It's just some data about the brightness values, color values of the pixels. So that's uh, very good to know. So that's it. That does bring us to the end of another episode of Twip Apps. I'm your host, Photo Joseph, and you can find me on the socials at Photo Joseph, as well as on my website at photoapps.com expert. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook and to visit our website at thisweekinphoto.com where you can sign up for our email list to be notified of new episodes and to get exclusive subscriber bonuses. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And if you're watching on our website, you can subscribe to the show using the subscribe box on this page. If you have feedback, suggestions, or comments about the show, you can reach me, Photo Joseph, directly by using our contact form. Just click on the contact us menu at the item at the top of the page. And finally, if you're a developer, and would like to be a guest on the Twip app show, click that same contact us button at thisweekinphoto.com and let us know what you've got. And with that, it's time to put your lens cap back on and go edit some photos. Mm -hmm.